my coffee shop has closed down. Witnessing its vandalized storefront fills me with profound sorrow. Such is life, we must learn to bid farewell gracefully. While enjoying coffee is a fine habit, it doesn't always translate into a successful business. I am currently in the coffee shop I run. The shop has closed down, and I am planning to sell all the unused items as scraps. For failed caterers like us, every penny we can make back counts. The mood is quite heavy at this time. Everything in the store has been completely dismantled. Another individual featured in the video shares the story of a friend's coffee shop. Despite investing 500,000 yuan, about 70,000 US dollars, the venture folded within three months. The struggle isn't limited to domestic coffee shops. Even foreign chains like Thailand's Cafe Amazon find it challenging to sustain operations in China. The brand began withdrawing from the Chinese market on January 27th. Cafe Amazon entered the Chinese market before 2019, but faced setbacks exacerbated by three years of pandemic restrictions. By April 2023, it had dwindled to only three stores from its remaining 13. However, before it was reported that Cafe Amazon intended to withdraw from the Chinese market, it participated in the Shanghai International Import Expo in 2023, hoping to find franchisees and agents in China, and planned to expand stores in Beijing and Shanghai. Due to the macroeconomic downturn and the impact of three years of pandemic lockdowns, consumer downgrading in China has spread to the restaurant industry. In 2023, Chinese domestic coffee brands Luckin Coffee and Kati Coffee initiated a price war, introducing a cup of coffee priced at 9.9 yuan, approximately $1.50, intensifying competition in the Chinese coffee market. At that time, Cafe Amazon chose to follow suit and lowered the price of its Thai coffee, originally priced between 3 and 4 US dollars, to $1.50, resulting in a significant decrease in profitability. Considering that this price war seemed to have no end in sight and its market share in China remained low, Cafe Amazon ultimately decided to withdraw from the Chinese market. Although Cafe Amazon has withdrawn from the Chinese market, the brand has not stopped its expansion, shifting its focus to the Southeast Asian market. In 2023, the parent company of Cafe Amazon announced an investment of 900 million US dollars and devoted substantial resources to its business in Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. Currently, Cafe Amazon has opened approximately 230 stores in Cambodia. Founded in 2002, Cafe Amazon is affiliated with PTT Oil and Retail Business. It is the largest coffee chain brand in Thailand and the sixth largest coffee chain brand in the world. Currently, Cafe Amazon has more than 4,500 stores in 11 countries, including Japan, Singapore, and Saudi Arabia. As China's economy continues to slump, bankruptcies have become a common occurrence in the catering industry. According to statistics from Tanyin88.com, as of October 29, 2023, there were approximately 191,600 coffee shops in China, with approximately 95,000 new coffee shops and approximately 44,000 closures. No one is more aware of this wave of closures than restaurant undertakers. The person in charge of a catering equipment recycling company in Shanghai said, The number of coffee machines that have been recycled recently has reached a terrifying level, and the warehouses are so full that there is no place to put equipment. Especially in recent months, the transfer rate of coffee machines has been 50% faster than in May 2023, which shows that the wave of coffee bankruptcies has already begun. On Chinese social platforms, there are many posts about the closure and transfer of coffee shops. One young couple joined a coffee franchise and lost 800,000 yuan, approximately 110,000 US dollars in six months. Someone else opened their first coffee shop at the age of 23 and closed down in two months. Another person reports that the coffee shop downstairs from their office went bankrupt. The manager of Shenzhen Banshan Coffee shared in a short video, our store opened in the summer of 2022, and the business was very good at the time. However, because the store is close to Banshan, the winter is very cold and windy. There was basically no business, and we have continued to lose money. I thought the business would explode again when summer came, but it showed no improvement. The total investment of 600,000 yuan, about 80,000 US dollars, was basically lost. It can also be seen from the data that China is having difficulty restoring economic momentum. 
China's official data on January 31st showed that the Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index (PMI) rose to 49.2 percent in January from 49 percent in December 2023, an increase of 0.2 percentage points, which is a slight rebound but still lower than the 50 percent growth rate. Manufacturing activity has shrunk for the fourth consecutive month. This shows that at the beginning of 2024, China's manufacturing industry and the overall economy are still struggling to regain momentum. The data is the first summary of China's economic performance at the start of the new year. It was in line with economists' forecast in a Reuters poll. After strict COVID-19 controls, China's economic recovery has been more difficult than expected. Zhu Wei Zhang, chief economist at Pinpoint Asset Management in Shanghai, told Reuters that deflationary pressures continue to exist and economic momentum remains sluggish. He expects the People's Bank of China to lower interest rates in the first half of the year to boost domestic demand. The sub-indices show that the New Orders Index and Production Index rebounded slightly, indicating improvement in market demand. But the Raw Material Inventory Index and Employee Index fell, and together with the New Orders Index, all three were below 50 percent. The New Orders Index was 49 percent, contracting for the fourth consecutive month. New Export Orders rose to 47.2 percent, contracting for the tenth consecutive month. In order to stimulate economic growth, Pan Gongsheng, governor. Of the central bank of China, announced that he would lower the deposit reserve ratio by 0.5 percentage points on February 5th to provide the market with 1 trillion yuan, approximately 140.5 billion U.S. dollars of long-term liquidity. The report pointed out that China's domestic stock market, namely A shares, continues to fall alongside pressures in the real estate industry, government debt risks, deflation, a large-scale withdrawal of foreign investment, high youth unemployment, and weak economic growth. Thousands of netizens lamented losing all their money. The Chinese authorities have an arduous task in trying to revive the economy. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the Non-Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index (PMI) was 50.7 percent, an increase of 0.3 percentage points from the previous month, higher than the critical point, and it is the highest level since September 2023. The non-manufacturing sector includes business activities in the service industry and construction industry. In terms of industries, the business activity index of the service industry was 50.1 percent, an increase of 0.8 percentage points from the previous month, recovering slightly after two months of contraction. The business activity index of the construction industry was 53.9 percent, a decrease of three percentage points from the previous month. The growth rate has slowed down significantly. The business activity index of railway transportation, postal services, currency and financial services, and other industries are all at 60 percent and above. The comprehensive PMI output index, including the manufacturing and service industries in January, was 50.9 percent, an increase of 0.6 percentage points from the previous month and a four-month high. The International Monetary Fund (IMF) raised China's economic growth forecast for 2024 from 4.2 percent to 4.6 percent on February 2nd, but it is still far lower than their 5.4 percent forecast in 2023. The IMF believes that China's economic growth will generally maintain the same growth rate this year as last year, but its growth momentum will gradually weaken in 2024 and beyond, dropping to 3.4 percent by 2028. According to Voice of America, some analysts said that China's economic downturn is the result of repeated policy mistakes, including heavy attacks on private enterprises such as the internet, gaming, and tutoring. Mass unemployment, especially among young people, has been the result. In addition, the authorities have allowed Evergrande and other real estate companies to overborrow for many years, forming a real estate market bubble. In addition, during the zero COVID period, China frequently implemented city closures and control measures, forcing foreign investors to flee and shift supply chains. The situation was exacerbated by foreign policy confrontation with the United States and the resulting economic sanctions imposed by the United States on China. Some scholars have analyzed that the withdrawal of foreign capital. And the flight of domestic capital have created a huge hole in China's capital market. Therefore, even if the central bank releases three trillion yuan, approximately 421.5 billion U.S. dollars, into the market, it may be difficult to fill the hole. 
The withdrawal of foreign investment is one of the reasons for China's economic depression. Mainland China used to be the most important investment destination for Taiwanese businessmen. However, as China's economy weakened and investment risks became too high, Taiwanese businesses migrated their supply chains. Kunshan, where Taiwanese businessmen gather, is about an hour's drive from Shanghai and is China's strongest economic county. However, some residents revealed that with the withdrawal of foreign investment, Kunshan is now facing the problem of population loss, and its former prosperity is no longer there. Something is happening in Kunshan right now, and it's more terrifying than house prices falling. It's the loss of population. Where has everyone gone? As we all know, many enterprises in Kunshan have left one after another. Take Foxconn, for example. When we were at Foxconn, you could see thousands of people in Kunshan. But now look at it. There are a few people from Foxconn wandering around on the streets. Basically, most people have evacuated. The outflow of population has a great impact on many industries in Kunshan. Take our real estate business as an example. We haven't seen a single customer come to our door for many days. The overall economy has not been good in recent years, and life has been difficult for everyone. The Taiwanese Ministry of Economic Affairs on January 15th showed that the number of approved investments in mainland China in 2023 was 328, a decrease of 11.8 percent compared to the same period last year. The amount of approved investment totaled three billion U.S. dollars, which is 39.8 percent less than the same period last year, a new low since 2002. The Taiwanese Ministry of Economic Affairs said that in 2023, investment in mainland China will account for 11 percent of Taiwan's overall overseas investment, which will be lower than investment in Southeast Asia for a second consecutive year. This indicates that as the U.S.-China trade war and the technology war intensify, Taiwanese businessmen are reorganizing their international supply chains and increasing the proportion of investments in the United States, Europe, Japan, and other countries to the south. Data from Taiwan's Ministry of Economic Affairs also showed that Taiwan's investment in China fell to its lowest level in 30 years. According to data, Taiwan's total approved overseas investment from January to November 2023 increased by 87 percent, compared with 25.8 billion U.S. dollars in 2022. However, investment in China dropped by 34 percent during the same period to 3 billion U.S. dollars. In 2010, spurred by the Economic Cooperation Framework Agreement (ECFA) signed that year, Taiwan's investment in China reached a peak, accounting for 84 percent of its overseas investment. Now the proportion is only slightly more than 10 percent, a sharp decrease of 70 percent. In contrast, Taiwan's investment in Europe and the United States has reached a record high. From January to November 2023, Taiwan's investment in the United States surged to 9.6 billion U.S. dollars, nine times that of the same period in 2022, accounting for 37 percent of the total. Taiwan's investment in Germany exceeded its investment in China in one fell swoop due to a new factory for semiconductor foundry (TSMC) reaching 3.9 billion U.S. dollars, which is 25 times that of the same period in 2022. In 2023, Taiwan's investment in the United States was three times that of in China. This was the first time that the United States has topped the list since Taiwan opened its direct investment to China in 1993. A Nikkei report pointed out that the reasons for the decline in Taiwan's investment in China include China's economic downturn and cross-strait tensions. In addition, China's exports have been subject to tariffs by the United States, and Taiwanese companies have found that doing business in China is getting more and more difficult. In order to reduce economic dependence on China, the Taiwanese government has launched incentives to attract Taiwanese companies to return. Lawyer Chen Yishen, a current affairs commentator, pointed out that since the U.S.-China trade war began in 2018, the United States has highlighted the CCP's security threats to democratic countries and called on all countries to decouple from the CCP. Since then, the international community's attitude toward the economy and trade has changed, and Taiwan has continued to reduce its economic and trade dependence on China. After Xi Jinping came to power, he adopted tightening policies on China's economy, domestic security, and diplomacy. 
Business requires a stable environment to prosper, but the political and social risks in China are too great. This has caused companies that were previously willing to take risks to begin to reduce their investment in China and turn to markets elsewhere. In addition, Chen Yishen said that the official statistical, economic, and trade data released by the CCP are all fake, which also poses considerable risks to corporate investment. It is tantamount to gambling if you continue to invest in China. Therefore, some companies that are more discerning and quick-handed have withdrawn from China very early. These are usually relatively large-scale companies. They have enough experts to assist in evaluation, and they have already begun reducing the proportion of investment in China. The political risks faced by Taiwanese businessmen investing in China are too high, as are the costs of labor and land acquisition. Businessmen have already made new investments in Southeast Asia or diversified their investments in Europe and the United States. They will not put all their eggs in the Chinese basket. Chen Yishen called on companies still in China to diversify risks and transfer investments abroad. He said, "Taiwanese businessmen should follow the international trend. When the world finds that China is not a good investment environment, Taiwanese businessmen should seek investment environments in other regions and markets to transform their companies."